The guy's running a business, Chris Licht, at the time. Um, and, you know, I mean, Donald Trump is the brand. And he, it's not like he's saying, oh, okay, you don't want to have uh, Republicans in the audience? Sure, I'm willing to do it with a neutral audience. I'm willing to do it with no audience. He's going to say no. He's going to say, you're either doing it my way or I'm not giving it to you. What do you do in that situation? Trump had all the leverage. But there is still a choice about whether to platform him or not. That is always a choice. It's a choice now about Robert Kennedy Jr. and his claims about vaccines. There is always a choice about whether to platform or not. I do err on the side of presenting these broadcasts, maybe not live, but presenting them and letting the viewers see who these people are and who these candidates are. We need to hear so much more from voters and frankly, so much less from these politicians that are pandering to them. Because the real story about America and the media right now is about the voters, about the people who think the media is out to get them, the people who think the media is the enemy of the people, when in fact, media is the people. Uh, you know, the person I trust most in the media is the local editor of the paper closest to my hometown. The media is not the enemy, the media is the people. And yet, that, that messaging has gone so awry, it's gone so far off the rails, because we need to hear more about why people have lost trust. Uh, and, and that's how I felt about the town hall. Forget about Trump. Let's talk to Trump's voters. Let's learn more from them, because then we're getting closer to the big story. I sometimes wonder if when people complain about the media, what they're really complaining about is the existence of the politician the media is covering. And I do think there's an element of that that's going on here when it comes to some of these far right candidates. And to some extent, maybe a, a, you know, a candidate like RFK Jr. who is putting pollution into the information ecosystem. So Nicole, I'm hearing from Brian. It's not the media's fault. No part of it, right? <laughs> not entirely. What I think we need is, is much more analysis, right? That's the, the way to cover somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene is to bring in experts to talk about um, what it is she believes and why she's so popular, why she is this kind of mainstream in a way, or at least um, huge national figure, despite representing um, a very small district. Why, why does she get so much outsized attention? And what does that mean? What are people responding to? What do supporters of Marjorie Taylor Greene think? Um, and how how can you address the kinds of things that they're they're going to her for? And there are some things that you can't do, right? Like if, if people are entertained by or interested in conspiracies about Jewish space lasers, there's very little you can do about that. But you can go into those conspiracies, explain the kind of work that they're doing. And that's probably not as entertaining as interviewing Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene. It might not bring in the same kind of ratings. And that becomes the kind of push-pull that's happening in journalism right now um, is how do you do that kind of analysis in a way that satisfies audiences without necessarily platforming some of the most odious people in the country who, again, you, you don't actually need to talk to Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene at this point to know what she believes. She has been on countless platforms saying exactly that. Um, so moving the conversation beyond just what Marjorie Taylor Greene believes um, or says to some of the, the broader dynamics around her.